Should Micron's results be seen as a warning for the rest of the semi space? That's where we'll start with Bernstein's Stacey Rascon. Stacey, uh, good to speak with you. Uh, I know you were coming into this period uh, saying, you know, really no question we've seen a peak of the cycle. How does it play out from here? You know, you can look at, at Micron's uh, coattail, so to speak, and say yeah. that there's still a little more reckoning to go. But, but where are we? Well, it's, it's just starting, right? And so what, what we've seen so far are multiples coming down. And multiples since the peak in the beginning of the year are down about 40% in the space. One sort of small bit of silver lining is that's even more than we typically see. Typical cycle, the last, I don't know, eight or 10 cycles, multiples have come down by about a third. Um, we're down 40%. The next step, though, is estimate cuts. And actually, this is what investors want to see. They want to see estimate cuts before they buy the stocks. Because they're worried, as you said, that that expectations are too high. So none of this is unusual. This is the typical progression of how we see things in the cycle. But that that is where we are. We need to see estimates come down. We've seen a little bit. Micron now is the first one to take a major structural cut to their numbers. Then we will see what what happens as we go forward. But my guess is is it's probably not. It's it's the first one we've seen. It's probably not the last. But it needs to happen. Does it does it pay in any in any parts uh, of the industry or in any particular names to try and anticipate that moment or say that uh, that a lot of uh, a lot of that's already reflected in the valuations? Well, I mean, this is why multiples are coming down, right? Because investors are, are not idiots, right? And they can see this. And the multiples are coming down because they don't believe the earnings, right? They think the denominator, the earnings are, are, are too high. So they need to come down before people can get comfortable. Um, I'd say there are a few names where you could argue that maybe they have been punished maybe more than, than, than they should. Um, I think you mentioned Semicap earlier. Semicap is it's getting a little angst because of some of Micron's comments. They talked about uh, reducing their equipment capex. But at the same time, people kind of understand this in, in, in Semicap, and they are trading very cheaply. They are pricing in probably lower levels of equipment spend than where I think uh, current news analyst consensus is for that. Um, Within the broader semi-space, I would say, like, we haven't seen broad panic in the multi. They've normalized. They've come up. We haven't seen panic. But there are a few names where maybe we are starting to see a little more, something more akin to panic, um, where multiples are much lower than they were even versus, like, pre-COVID troughs. In my coverage, these are names like, say, Qualcomm or AMD. Um, Qualcomm is low because anything touching a smartphone right now is pretty much death, right? Like, smartphones have been very weak. But... They actually have a little less exposure to some of those areas that are weak. Um, they've got a good adjacency story, and it's trading at like 10 times earnings or even less today, uh, much lower than its pre-COVID trough. AMD is another one. Um, they've got, they just reiterated guidance a couple of weeks ago anyways. They've got many, many growth drivers. Um, they were already more measured on their expectations for some of the areas that are weak, like PCs. Um, and it's trading at 15 times earnings. Its pre-COVID trough was 24. Um, and there's a, you know, it's, it's, it's probably eight or nine times on their sort of longer term outlook, their 2025 outlook. So that's one where, at least there's a few things where investors could be sharpening their pencils, if nothing else at this point.